All right, so the main thing really here is we're dealing with something with a denominator squared. It could have been cubed, it could have been power 5, it could have been power 6. The one on the right clearly is the power of 1. So it's important that we, have, we can distinguish between the two uh, in terms of our approach. What we can do in this instance is recognize that this is the same as 3 times 4x minus 5 to the power of minus 2dx. Whereas this one here is the integral of 3 times 4x minus 5 to the power of minus 1 dx. Now the problem with that is that if we use the approach that we have so far, uh, which involves adding a power, then obviously we start dealing with difficulties here because you have things to, eventually you'll have to divide by 0. And so a question that has a linear function, 4x minus 5, or a linear function with a power, will always be approached either with the method that we've used so far or a different method, the one we spoke about at the end of yesterday's lesson. So if we look at this example here, that was the same as 3 times the integral of 4x minus 5 to the power of minus 2dx. So if you copy those down for me and have a go at that one for me, give me whatever answer you think that's going to be. So you've got 4x minus 5 in brackets to the power of negative 2. what the answer in that scenario would be. We just have this chair nearby. Is that the answer that you guys got? Just check, check that your answer is similar to mine. So uh, we need to add 1 to the power and divide by the same amount, negative 1. We also needed to, to bring out negative a quarter because of the 4 and the minus 1. So when we multiply those two and turn that into a fraction, and that's where that minus 1 and the quarter come into it. Happy with that? So our approach has generally been write the same value, the same linear function down, add a power, in this case making it negative one. What fraction goes in front? Well the four and the one, in this case negative. And if we bring those two together because there's a three in front, we end up with negative three quarters times that expression's power of negative one. That can go on the bottom and join the four. If we meet it all up. Yeah. This stage here, I used that formula that we looked at yesterday. Uh, the formula was if you have the integral of ax plus b to the power of n dx, the formula is now, like, and we'll have a look at all the, at the other approach we talked about yesterday as well. But this would be 1 over a, whatever that value of a is here, so 4 times ax plus b, well, ax plus b is 4x minus 5. Uh, this is going to be a, sorry, 1 a over a, ax plus b, the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1, all of that plus c. That was the formula we had. Remember that? Yeah. And if we use that, we know what a is. a in this case is 4. Uh, ax plus b is 4x minus 5. If we add 1, we get negative 1. That goes on the bottom as well, plus C, and then obviously I need to multiply that by 3 as well. Yeah, so that formula there, that statement there, 
will always give you the results you need if you want to follow the formula. The other thing we looked at was if we ignore the 3, was to say, well, we need to then add 1, but also put a fraction of the price. And that fraction is always 1 over whatever those two products will be. Negative 4. Remember that? Yep. So you can either choose to follow a more formulaic approach or a slightly more intuitive approach, which is I'm always going to do this. Uh, multiply those two, bring out a fraction, that sort of thing. So you end up in that scenario there. We're all reasonably okay with how we got to that stage there. Okay? So I use the formula in this instance, but equally I could have used that sort of intuitive approach uh, as well. Okay? I just need to not forget about that three. Remember, any integral with a constant in it is quite a useful approach to bring it out of the, out of the integral and worry about it later. So I thought, okay, let's bring 3 out, that leaves me with just 1 over that. Worry about the x, then worry about the 3. You don't have to do that, but it can be quite a useful thing when there's lots going on. In this instance, if, and, and the reason why I chose to use the formula here is because if I add 1, I'm going to get 0 here in the formula divided by 0. Yeah. So I've chosen to use the formula in this example because of that. Uh, so if I recognize this, I'll still have a 3. I would still have negative a quarter. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have 0. That becomes a problem. And I'd be dividing by 0. So clearly that's not going to work. This instance here is going to be using the formula that if I have the integral of 1 over ax plus b, Dx. In other words, the power is 1 on the bottom, not something else. But that's the same as 1 over A, the natural log of Ax plus B plus C. And so in this instance, then, I could then say that 1 over A, I'm going to have to worry about 3 at the front, so I've got the 3 to think about. Then the value of A is 4, so 1 over 4. And then log of the 4x minus 5. Plus C, and in this case, that's your answer would then be 3 quarters log of 4x minus 5 plus C. So, the most important thing to recognize in this instance is the difference between the two. The one will be what we've done previously, and quite a few of, and the other is to use natural logs. And it will only apply if your denominator is a linear function to the power of 1, not to any other power. Otherwise, that approach will always work for you, as long as it's a linear function, ax plus b to the power of n. Always works. So what I'd like you to do for the next five or ten minutes is to do more of those questions that you were busy with yesterday. If my memory serves me, those questions included some that were to do with the log-related questions. So the question I'm doing on the board now from the exercise 5c, This was from five exercise five C. Marcus is saying it's one J, yes? Yeah. Question one J. What we have here is the integral of one over four times x plus three to the power of two dx. Well it's going to be of the form that we've been doing so far. That formula there. Where n is going to be negative two. But then what I tend to do is, if there is a constant, I bring it to the front of the integral. So I'll have a quarter times 1 over x plus 3. Does that make it? I think it's properly spotted already. Yeah, it takes care of itself, doesn't it? I'm going to finish it only because I've got this on the video. And at least we've got something to refer to. So I'm going to have negative 2 here, aren't we? And then we can take our normal approach. So we know that that's going to be a quarter. We know we're going to have to get add 1 to this. And then the fraction in front is going to be uh, negative a half. Sorry, negative one, I mean. Yeah, yes, one. agreed. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So we're going to have negative a quarter times x plus one, x plus three to the minus one. Am I right so far? I think I am. Uh, and that's all plus c. So that's going to then just become. If I neaten this up, minus 1 over 4 times x plus 3, yeah. all of that plus some arbitrary constant, 
So let's just double check. We've added one to the power definitely. Multiply those two to give us an idea of what the fraction will be. Bring everything together neatly to make it negative, of course. Bring that to the bottom. That's just a fraction that's going to split itself over two levels. That's the key step, I think. Okay. I'm looking at question 1b. Question 1b. This is from exercise 5e. Question is 1b. And this is the question is the integral of 3 over 2 plus 5x dx. What hopefully you will notice straight away, what hopefully you will notice straight away, I'm going to turn it off because the light's not actually helping my course for the purposes of the video. That 3 over 2 plus 5x clearly has a number we can bring to the front. We could make that 3 times 1 over 2 plus 5x. Will that be so far? Then the numerator, sorry, the denominator is clearly a linear function. It's 2 plus 5x from the bottom. But it's the power of 1. Yes. So the first thing I should recognize is I'm going to have to use uh, then, or the natural law. And if I do that, I need to bring, I've got the 3 already, I need to multiply it by 1 over a, or a in this case is 5, the number in front of x, times the natural law of whatever is the, the, the denominator, 2 plus 5x, plus c. So let's take a look at that. The 3 is up. We've taken that out of the start, but now we've brought it back in again. 1 over a is going to be the 1 over 5 times the natural log of whatever ax plus b is. Well, that's the denominator there, 2 plus 5x, plus some arbitrary constant. And in this neatest form, will simply be 3 over 5 log 2 plus 5x plus c. Of course, what you could also have done is rearrange that 2 plus 5x to 5x plus 2, but it doesn't really matter. It makes no difference whatsoever in terms of format. That could also have been written as 5x plus 2, not 2 plus 5x. Difference between those two, this is a power 2, this is a power 1. Anything with a power 1 will be a log outcome. So the question we're looking at is a definite integral this time. This is from 5d question 2b. Exercise 5D question 2B is what we're looking at. Um, and so the question is the integral between 1 and 2, is it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Of 1 over 2x plus 3 dx. We know we're dealing with something of 1 over ax plus b, where the power is 1. So there will be a log answer. So I'm going to, I'll worry about the 2 and the 1 later. So that will be, sorry, that will just simply equal 1 over 2, so 1 over a, log of 2x plus 3 uh, plus c. But what we're interested now is in the 2 and the 1. So that's going to be a half log of 2x plus 3 uh, between 1 and 2. Yeah, so we've got a half log of, is that 7? A half log 7 minus a half log 5. That's uh, what I'll get there after substitution. Is that right? Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, 5. 5, was what I think is right. So now what I could do is uh, just simplify that further. I'm intrigued to see what their answer is, but I could take a half out as a common factor and just have a log... 7 minus log 5 in brackets, which we know will be a half log of 7 over 5. All with me so far? I'm just using log laws. Um, well then, what you do next is you could make that a square root if you wanted to, because obviously the half is at the front, and you could make it a power. So that could have become log of 7 over 5 to the power of a half. Does that make sense? 
neither of those two is any less or more simplified and would equal, be equally uh, acceptable. What, I'm intrigued to know what their answer was. Is, is there an answer? Yeah, it was half work, so that was five. Here we go. Um, so can you, I guess you can't just give it as like a, 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 a hologram on this. As a definite order. Yeah. Yeah. You could have, I suppose what you've just got to be careful of is what the question is asking for. Okay. If they say, for example, please leave your answer in a form, I don't know, A log B or something, then you have to go that route. If there's no option, and certainly the front of the exam would probably say something along the lines of give your answers to three significant figures or something, then if there's no specific instruction, you could have used your calculator. But there's no need to. This is an exact answer, whereas your answer with decimals would not be exact. In my view, that's a better solution than a decimal, um, simply because it is the exact solution. Does it help?